Hi, my name is Melissa, and I'm the Artisan Huntress. For my whole life, I've been fascinated with artisans and people who create things. Join me as we discover artists, artisans, designers, and crafters from all over the world. We'll discover amazing people who are creating beautiful things. We'll get up close and personal tours of their studios, ateliers, and speak with them about their inspiration, process, how they got started, and the business of being an artisan. Hello everybody, I am here today with, again, another wonderful friend of mine, Jorge Caravelli. We're sitting here in his home. Um, Jorge is a true Renaissance man, a multifaceted artist, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about how you became that way. <laughs> Okay. So, Jorge, tell me, first of all, your house is beautiful, and thank you so much for letting us come here. No, it's my pleasure. And, uh, you know, sit here and have a little informal chat. Um, and I, I'm so excited to do this because I've always wanted to be able to pick your brain and, and learn a little bit more about how you started on your artistic path. So, first of all, t where, Jorge, where are you from? Where were you born? I was born in Manhattan. Okay. And my parents came down to Miami when I was one month old, and I've been okay. here ever since. Okay. Um, my family is Hispanic background, Argentina yeah. and Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. So I grew up in a Hispanic household in Miami, learning you know, Cuban idioms and from my friends in school and uh, eating good rice and beans. Yeah. So. Uh, I know my daughter, it, her dad's from Argentina, but she talks like a Cuban. You know? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, when I get mad, I still have that Cuban it's, accent. It's osmosis when you live in Miami, yes. for sure. So, okay, so you went to school here in South Florida, and when did you start to discover this artistic thing within yourself? You know, it's funny. When I, I remember being five or six years old, and people would ask, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And my response would be an artist. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said that. I had no art talent at the time, but that's what I would always answer. How were you at like drawing and school? Terrible, absolutely terrible. Stick figures, no good. My mother, <laughs> you know, she kept hearing me say this, so she sent me to art school. Once I was the youngest kid in the class there, I think I was like eight at the time. Um, and I enjoyed it, but didn't have any inherent talent. Uh -huh. um, it wasn't until my teenage years where I picked up a camera and I started taking pictures and uh, uh -huh. when we, we traveled um, that I could feel my expression coming out and mm -hmm. uh, love the beauty of, of, of taking pictures and making them, creating a certain look, a certain emotion when you see them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was uh, in my, I was 19 or two when I discovered dance mm -hmm. and I started dancing. Um, how did, wait, how did that happen? Because <laughs> was, you go from photography yeah. to dance, that's kind of a big stretch. That's a big, that's a big change. What happened was my wife was taking ballet class Mm -hmm. And um, so she was going out in the evenings, and we didn't see each other a couple of nights a week. And so she said, well, why don't you come down to ballet class? And I'm not taking a ballet class. I'm putting on tights. Especially from a Latin family. Especially. God no, no, no. Forget, forget it. it. No, no. It took me a year to run out of excuses. And I finally said, <laughs> all right, I'll go to a jazz class, and, you know, we'll try that. Mm -hmm. Did it. Fell in love with it. Absolutely loved it. And kept going. And the teacher was saying, Jorge, you got a lot of talent. you got to, you know, improve your skills. You have to take ballet to get your basic training. So I started taking ballet class. Love that and spent the next 10 years performing with groups locally and with some of the best dancers at the time from New York. Um, okay, so, but wait, don't gloss over that so fast. Oh, yes. You were dancing with some pretty significant ballet companies and with some very well-known ballet dancers, so do you want to drop sure. a few names here? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, at the time, Miami City Ballet had not started yet, mm -hmm. um, so we had some local companies that I would dance with. One was Ballet Concierto. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that one. And um, run by dancers from the old Alicia Alonso company in Cuba. And so they're Which just, were really Russian, they're very strict, classical. And, yeah, very formal program. Mm -hmm. um, so I danced with, some, with them for a few years where I, we were bringing the stars from New York. We got Nuriev, Alexander Gudinov, um, oh Stephanie God. Salan, I met Margot Fontaine. Um, Fernando Bojones, he also came to do that school, so he taught us classes there a couple times. Mm -hmm. He was great. It was, so, I mean, some really, really impressive dancers. 
Wow. And we got to be in the background dancing with Wheat, because mm. you know, people pay to come see them and gave us an opportunity to be on stage. Mm -hmm. Then, after a few years, I left them and I joined a smaller company where I got to be the star in a much smaller group, and we did performances throughout town and stuff like that. So that was fun. Um, and then, uh, when I was 29, I retired because you just get your body wears out and it gets old. Yeah, no, it is a lot of wear and tear on your body. So, but I have, I heard that you were very good at like doing those big leaps and those oh, yes. I was a jumper. and he was, you were a jumper. Huh? I was a jumper. Some people are good turners. Mm -hmm. I was a jumper and I love jumping. I love flying up in the air. Um, such a great sense of freedom yeah. uh, when doing that. And so I, I focused a lot on that. Uh -huh. um, and then after I retired from, from professional uh, ballet, I would do some guest performances for a year or so uh, mm -hmm. with other people around town who had known me and would hire me to for their performance. Because uh, guys are very few and straight guys even fewer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I would dance sure. very masculine and they liked that. Yeah. Um, and then I just started doing tap dancing and some folkloric um, for fun. It's something I could do with, it wasn't as demanding as ballet. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. it gave me a chance to continue to develop, you know, my interest in dance. Mm -hmm. um, and then, right, on or about when I hit 40, my knees gave out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just got worse and worse. And I just, I couldn't dance anymore. And that's, yeah. I always wondered why all my teachers had bad knees. <laughs> and now I, you know, I, I found out why. It takes 10 years before it gets to you, but when it does, I had to completely stop, which is terrible. It yeah. was depressing. Um, it is. Na it's uh, Natalia Makarova, who was one of the greatest Russian ballet dancers of all time, she said, "A dancer dies twice in their life. The mm -hmm. first, when they realize they can no longer dance." Yeah. And that was my situation. I was uh, frustrated. I was upset. I was struggling. Um, I was depressed for mm -hmm. almost three years, trying yeah. to, you know, trying to just do a little bit of dance, and, and just the pain would be too much. Um, and so I was through that, and my wife saw that, and she kept trying to encourage me, why don't you try doing this and try doing that, and mm. so take a sketch class and all. And finally one day, we were at uh, an art fair, mm -hmm. and we looked and we saw this body cast sculpture, and she loved it, she wanted to buy it. And I looked and I thought, well, that's pretty cool, but I think I can do that. So uh, mm. um, I should kind of backtrack. It wasn't that. The, first, the first fair we went to had wood sculptures, right? and that's okay. what I started on first. Right. Um, so we're at this outfair and I see these wood sculptures made uh, out of a lathe. That was their basic tool. Mm -hmm. And I've always been good with my hands and I figured I could do that. So we went mm -hmm. and I uh, took a class, uh, studied with a guy for a couple of days and then bought my tools, started playing around and experimenting and I started doing uh, abstract wood sculptures like mm -hmm. some of these. Yeah, you can see a couple of pieces in the background here. They're very delicate, they're exquisite. Uh, but when we finish the interview, we're going to do a little tour of all this artwork. So I'm looking forward to that. So you started, um, did you take classes or did it just I come sort of innately to you? I found a, a master, a guy who taught other people how to do that and worked out of his home. So I went up, it was near Tampa somewhere. Uh, went up there, spent a couple days and just one on one. And he taught me that how to use the different tools, the different styles, the different ways of, of working with the lathe and working with wood. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came and just started experimenting. I'd pick up pieces of wood on the side of the road, take it in, cut it up, and start out with some basic shapes, some bowls, and then some vases, and then make it more complica complicated. And I found I really liked the abstract more. Mm. Um, so you have your basic shape, but in a way that you don't normally see wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, that was that was neat, especially when it's real delicate like that, because you don't see wood as delicate. You see it no, as brutish. No, absolutely. It's amazing because these pieces back here, I mean, you know wood is heavy and thick, and this is like light and airy, and it's they're beautiful pieces. Yeah, I like so. to get the feeling of movement mm -hmm. um, in the pieces, as, as if it's so delicate the wind is blowing and they're floating. Mm -hmm. um, well, so it definitely was, looks like that. Um, they're beautiful. So you you were did wood. How long were you playing with wood? So <laughs> I was, <laughs> um, four or five years I was doing that, and then I got to a point where I didn't have anything more to say. It's like I didn't know where else to go. Uh, I struggled to find new ideas and things that were interesting. I didn't like making crafts. It had to be artistic. Mm -hmm. um, and it was at that point that we went to an art fair, and mm -hmm. we saw this body cast sculpture. My wife fell in love with it. She wanted to buy it. And I looked and I said, 
I can do that. So, uh, so did she buy it? Or did no, she, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't. Gonna let I you told, do. <laughs> she actually turned to me. She asked, "Can you do something like that?" And I said, "Yeah, I think so. Well, let, let me give it a try." So <laughs> I studied up on which materials to use, um, how they do it in Hollywood with the uh, uh, silicone compound and the plaster and the top, and the way they make uh, prosthetics for Hollywood, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the best quality material, materials, and to get all the good details. So I studied that, and then I experimented on her uh, for a few different poses and trying different things, uh, just getting used to the materials and how to do it until she finally she got fed up and said, that's it, go get some models. <laughs> so so um, she's an actress. So mm -hmm. she has a lot of friends who are very expressive and uh, sure. are game for a lot of things. So we put out on our Facebook page, hey, I'm doing this. Does anybody want to volunteer to help? I'll make a sculpture and I'll give you a, give you a copy. Mm -hmm. We had so many of her friends volunteer. That's it was, so we had, People walking in the house for you know, weeks there. Um, so you walk out of her office and there's another naked person walking through the house. <laughs> and um, uh, it was just a lot of fun. They were very expressive, great, and I got mm -hmm. to build up my portfolio that way. And then from there, it went on and people would find out and hear about me and ask for commissions and, mm -hmm. and it went out in that direction. So while we're talking about it, Jorge, if people wanted to ask you questions or they were interested in having you do any body casting, how do they get in touch with you? Um, I have an Instagram site and also a web page. It's yeah. JC Bodycast Miami, all is one word. Mm -hmm. So the website is jcbodycastmiami.com. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, you can find JC it through Bodycast. JC Bodycast Miami. And if they wanted to email you? It's carabelli8 at yahoo.com. Carabelli, C A R A B E L L I, the number eight. Yes. At Yahoo. Yes, very so good. Yahoo, okay. That's a tough name for people. Well, I've, I've, I've emailed you a couple of times. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So now you're body casting, and are you like, did you, are you doing this full time? Do you have a day job? Like, how do you do this? And were you like, I don't, I'd rather do this than that? Like, how did you? Uh, work well, that? fortunately, uh, to me, the work that I chose was uh, real estate. Hmm. And so I had, I got to the point where I had some apartment buildings where I could pretty much leave them alone and I had a lot of free time. Um, and that would give me the time to work on those properties a couple hours in the morning, do the bookkeeping, whatever, and then I come back and spend the day doing my art. Mm -hmm. um, and now that I don't have the buildings anymore, I'm semi-retired, I still focus on my art. Uh, gives me more time to do that. And I'm in a position where I don't need to sell them. I don't really want to sell them. I want to, I mean, it'd be nice, but I don't need to sell them. <laughs> right. So I, I can understand. focus You're on- You're not a starving artist. I'm not a starving artist. <laughs> which means I can, I can concentrate on the art that pleases me, that if I find it's an expression. Mm -hmm. uh, so many artists, because in their struggle to make a living, they find the one or two things that sell and then they focus all their attention on doing sure. that and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. To me, mm -hmm. that's boring. Uh, I am constantly looking to expand uh, my way of expression, what interests me, what I can do with different materials and, and with sculpture in general. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of the fun is looking for new mediums and looking for new ways of expression. So what, like, what inspires you? Like when you're starting to do a piece, what is it that kind of inspires you to create and have you been able to figure that out or? Yes. Um, what I really like is trying to find a little bit of the person's personality mm. and to bring that out into the sculpture. Mm. And the more open and uh, expressive and sensitive someone is, the more of that emotion comes out and the more I can capture that in a body cast or mm -hmm. a, a small sculpture. Yeah, because when you think of body casting, you think of it's just, oh, I'm just like pouring a model mm -hmm. of a part of the body, but there, it sounds like there's more to it than that. Oh, it's not about bodies. Um, there are people who do this around the world, and some of them, you look at the worst, and it's, they just do a little piece of the body, and that's it, and it doesn't look like much. I try to make it artistic. I try to, like I say, make it an expression of who the people are, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that takes a little while. So yeah. what we'll do is we get into my studio, mm -hmm. and I'll have them disrobe, and then talk to me. And that's where they get over their jitters of being, you know, being naked yeah, in front of me. Yeah, that could be a little nerve. It could be a little nerve, I'm sure. And so we talk. It helps them kind of calm down a little bit and also lets me watch how they move as they're talking. I'll ask them intimate questions and, 
you know, about their life and all. And as I'm watching and I'm seeing they're doing this or they're doing this or doing something. And from that, I'll get an idea of what is a good pose. What's a pose that's reflective of who they are and can express a little bit of what emotion they're, they're going through at the time. Um, and then we try a couple of poses, we find what we like, and then we, we do the work. Interesting. And uh, so do you, you work in a studio, you're not like out in the Yes, we have, a, we have a studio in a, in a building behind our house mm -hmm. where I do all the dirty work, because plaster work can be very dirty. Yeah. Um, but when I bring the models in, I set up my office, drop cloths and the bench and everything, so they can work in nice air conditioning, mm -hmm. clean. Yeah, you situation. and you do some large pieces, so that's got to take up a lot of room. They do. They uh, they're life size, yeah. <laughs> so they do take up quite a bit of space, and it's you, know, you get a lot of them, and it's hard to find all the space to stack them and put them. Um, which was convenient in that when COVID hit, mm. I couldn't. I had to stop doing the body cast mm, because yeah. to body cast, I am this close with someone for an hour, sure, and it's just not it wasn't appropriate. So I had to find something else to do. So friends would send me photographs of their wife or girlfriend or themselves. Mm -hmm. And if from the photographs, I would make these smaller play sculptures. It was a way to kind of keep yeah. my skills intact, to practice doing a different type of medium, and gave me something to do while we went through the quarantine. Yeah. Um, so I'll, we'll walk around. I'll show you some yeah. of the ones that I've done. Uh, some were from models from an art class. Uh -huh. uh, some were from photographs from a friend so mm -hmm. that I, I sent them in. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, let's do that. Let's uh, let's go for a walk. Okay. Let's start over here by the piano. Here we are. We've moved over to the piano, and this is great because this is a really great example of kind of all the different things that Jorge has done. So, talk to me. Tell me okay. what we're looking at. Okay. Well, these are the original wood sculptures I would make. Um, one of my first attempts would be simple bowls and then decorating that them. That is not simple, them. by the way. That is, no, that is, that uh, is not simple. It's, they started out gorgeous. simple, but then uh, I started getting more elaborate. And, Can uh, I touch? Yes. Am I allowed to like? Yes. Okay, so this is one it's piece. One piece. It's all glued together. Uh, it's, there's multiple pieces in there, but they're glued together. Oh, okay. To so that's that. multiple pieces that were glued together. Mm -hmm. This is so exquisitely gorgeous. May I? Yes. I'll be very careful. Can you see this is absolutely, what kind of wood is this? Um, I believe that one is um, tropical almond. almond, the bottom parts. And the top parts, I think, are well, that part is oak, and I'm not sure what the top okay. piece is. Here's another fascinating, how did that, oh, that goes in and That's out. That's yeah, I call that great balls of fire. Yeah, sure looks like it. This is Jerry It's kind of along Lewis. the theme of trying to, Trying to see movement, trying to see yeah, you know, flames moving. And How do you make something round? I mean, that's like got to be... <laughs> that's really... a little tougher. Yeah, that's uh, like... It took some work. Um, yeah. There are certain specific tools for making round pieces. Um, I didn't have that, so I just had to experiment. There. Boop. And it's all in a lathe, so you figure it out eventually. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Okay, um, another wooden... And this is one of the last pieces I did. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I see waves, waves they of the ocean. They do look like waves, absolutely beautiful. And I like that it's floating, mm -hmm. uh, floating there. So that, that's one of my favorite ones. Exquisite. Um, to move on to the body cast, this is my self-portrait. Oh, is it? Yes. Um, I wanted to do something that, a self-portrait, uh -huh. but I couldn't figure out what would be the, uh, the right way to do it that, that would really express who I am. Until I'd settle on, it's this is my hands, that's who I am. Yeah. This my, these are my hands yeah. um, in the midst of plaster and awesome. sculpting. I think that that is beautiful. So, what do you have? Uh, okay, so rings, I'm seeing other things. This, on this your is finger. plaster dripping on my hands, as if, oh, okay. as if I was just, working with the plaster and came out of and it. And that's kind of what your hands look like when yeah. you're working and with And these the are plaster. my actual hands. Okay, cool. And then. And then this is during COVID, this is the, one of the first pieces I did. Um, a friend of mine who uh, been thinking about modeling for years and finally she said, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so, she, so she came over and we took some pictures and I made this, uh, this pretty little piece here of her. So you, you took a picture and then mm -hmm. you created a clay... I get pictures uh, from all different model. angles. I line them up on the wall in front of my studio and then I do it in clay first mm -hmm. where I can get all the detail. And then I 
mold it as if I'm molding a body cast. So I make a mold around the clay because the clay is okay. not permanent. And that's a whole art form itself, trying to uh, making the the molds sure. that, for these things. Um, and if the mold, then I pour it in plaster, and that's the plaster uh, finish. Awesome, beautiful. Okay, let's. This um, is taken from the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, it actually was Janet Jackson was in this pose. Um, and I always, it was a very intriguing pose. It is an intriguing pose. <laughs> and um, one of the models that I used, he, he sent me a picture of it. He had found it. He says, wow, this is cool. You know, have you ever done this? I said, man, I've been trying to find the right couple to do it with because you need the cooperation of both people. He yeah. says, well, I can do it with my girlfriend. So they both came over. They were, they're both sports models. Okay. So perfect physical condition. And she had to hold her arms in that position for about 45 minutes. Okay, that's and towards hard. the end, she was shaking and trembling, but she was stubborn. She wasn't going to give up. Yeah, it came out gorgeous. Which was great, yes. That's beautiful. Yeah, because there's so much detail in there. And, just and I love that oh, wow. you did her face. You know, I, I just think it's beautiful how you were able to incorporate part of the body, you know. Yeah, this is very typical of what I like to do. It's just a portion of the face. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, a little bit of the chin, mm -hmm. a little bit of the cheek. And you can kind of get a sense of who they are. You can get a sense yeah. of what they're feeling. She's got a lot of pride. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes out there. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of my favorite nice pieces. Nice abs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where should we go next? The sideboard? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So this is one of my pieces that's um, based on a Japanese artist. Um, I don't remember his name offhand, but I remember seeing some pieces and thinking it was very interesting how he used different materials mm -hmm. and how he used space differently. Um, this is very light, and this is hollow. Yeah. I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> Amazing. And you made the whole everything. Yeah. Yes. It's beautiful. And I like the way you use like the rope, but then the wood. It's yes. And these are the natural colors of the wood. This, yeah. uh, I believe that's pangum. Um, these what are did all you say? Pangum. Pangum. I think, I think that's the name of the wood. These are all local woods, woods I found around here or someone gave to me or I mm -hmm. picked up somewhere. Um, but yeah, the natural yellow is the color of the wood and as it uh, starts to rot, it gets these striations of gray oh, in it. So right. it's, in the, it's in the middle of starting to, going from life to dead. And you get it at the right time and you get these pretty little patterns that just mm. look really interesting. Very beautiful. And this is, I think it's my latest one, yeah. Um, this is a friend of mine who was um, a bodybuilder when she was younger. And well, you can tell. So, yeah. <laughs> Paid off. She, uh, yeah, she's a great figure. Um, again, this is, her husband sent me a bunch of pictures. And the most intriguing one was this one where you could see the impressions mm -hmm. where he was holding her in the behind. And I just thought that was just so erotic. Also, very yeah. so exquisite I wanted to with the, not the draping. I like the draping, her feet. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I did some small um, little sculptures of when I first got started just to this is see Janet. I like it. This is my wife. Yeah, yes. I can tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very nice. There's a friend of mine who's a yoga teacher mm -hmm. and offered to do some yoga poses for me. And I <laughs> said, an exquisite body when way she yeah. can move. And I think this was really captures the fluidity and the movement. Yeah. Um, see, I, I look at bodies as a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, because a dancer, you spend six hours a day staring at yourself in the mirror and other people and, and admiring and criticizing your own and other people's bodies. So you become very attuned to every little muscle. Mm -hmm. So what I like is when I find someone with, they don't have to even have a perfect body, but it has a certain grace to them. Sure. And she holds herself with a certain style. And it looks, you can see the fluidity of movement in that piece. It's not mm -hmm. a static, just standing there. Right. I understand. And uh, she captures that beautifully. Yeah. And it's almost it's, like it's elongated, you know, to emphasize the, you know, the movement. Yes. Hmm. Beautiful. Um, this is a model of class, and this is a, uh, another friend of mine who likes to joke that she's a mermaid at heart. So I made a piece with her <laughs> coming out of the ocean. Nice. Very pretty. I like that one yeah. a lot. They live on a boat, so, he, so they, had, they said you have to make a wide base on it so it doesn't fall over. Oh, right. <laughs> well, so I said, okay, that's an interesting issue to deal with, but 
we made a you wide, nice it, wide base for her. Make so. it work. <laughs> yeah. So you can do that. Nice. Okay. Well, let's go over here. This is a painting of Jorge leaping. This is. It, it's from a photograph um, from when I was dancing in my 20s, um, doing what's called the Prodigal Son Leap, which a lot of people know it as. And it's painted by a good friend of ours, the artist Julio Blanco. Uh, He's a local artist, very talented musician and painter. And uh, he agreed to paint that abstract version of that photograph for us mm -hmm. um, that we later used as a wine label and we made some, some of our own wines. Cool. Okay. So, so over here, we have some body casts. Um, one of the ones I like the most are these two here where you could kind of get a little bit of the, in this one here, her face tells the whole story. Mm. I mean, you get a little sensitivity, a little self-reflection. Mm. Um, her hand and her mouth, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so it's, it's not about the body parts at mm. all. It is all about that particular person and capturing who she is. Mm. And this one here is, is that's my Janet. wife. Janet. <laughs> um, but that's, she captures her little smile. She's yeah. always smiling and she's yeah. a happy person and that, that was kind of fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, some of these have a, an emotional story to them, which mm. pleases me no end. Mm. In that, uh, for instance, this one here is a friend of ours. She's, uh, at the time, she was 60. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd like to, would you pose for me for a pause? She says, well, you know, I'm 60. It's a 60-year-old body. I, don't know. I said, don't worry. I, I can bring out <laughs> I got you. the I got beauty. You. <laughs> I'll take care. I, got the, I can pluck the beauty in you. So... I posed her in a way that I, I thought expressed who she was, made it, and when she saw the final result, she started crying. She loved crying. it. She did. Aww. She loved it. And that makes That's me beautiful. feel good. Oh, yeah. Um, of course. So that was sweet. And this woman, um, she is older, and she recently had a double mastectomy. Oh. So at the time, I don't know if she knew and just didn't tell me that she had cancer, but she was anxious to have her, have her done, so she, yeah. we did her. And then... A year or two later, she called me. She says, I had a double mastectomy. You know, I have the implants, and I'd like to get a new uh, a body cast with a new uh -huh. figure and, you know, compared to the old. So we're, we're in the process of working on that. Oh, really? She's, uh, oh, yeah, okay. she's finally recovered, and she's ready to move oh, forward. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, that is quite an So I thought that was, story. I always wanted to do one back to back. Uh, and I love how and you did the, the arms and the hands and just sort of part of that whole, the continuity of it is really cool. Yeah, it, it, it gives a very light, floating feeling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this guy I like a lot. He's very quiet-spoken, but very strong character. Um, you see that boy. And yeah, and, and he just, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, and I think of that with the fist there, really get a sense of it. But sure. he's very sensitive, and he's nice. He's, uh, he's a good friend. He's uh, also a model, and um, is one of my, Nice. One of the more popular pieces that people tend to like. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, let's go this way. So on the wall here, we have some more body cast. Mm -hmm. And you see there's a whole range of styles. Um, some, that one was a commission, and these were volunteers, and that one is just a, a nice abstract, at first you're not quite sure what you're looking at, mm. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And there's more wood. Here, odds and ends, yeah. Uh, this is the, that bodybuilder. Oh, boy, and, uh, yeah. Uh, the full body piece, and mm -hmm. some other wood pieces and, and things. Here's another one of your very light wood bowls, beautiful, that you painted over, like a pearlized kind of a there, thing. There are some woods that look great um, mm -hmm. because they have beautiful fibers in them and, mm -hmm. and coloring, and others that are very boring. Mahogany, Florida mahogany is a very boring looking wood. So, but it's hard enough where you can make them thin, and then I paint mm -hmm. them afterwards. So if the wood is, looks nice, we keep the color of the wood, and if it's not interesting, then I'll, I'll paint the piece. Mm -hmm. 
very pretty. Thank you. Thank you. This was a girl in our uh, apprentice girl who posed for our art class. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have a lot of time to, to work with her. So I didn't get a chance to, to finish it, but started and I've always liked it because it's so rare to get a pregnant model. I know. <laughs> so that also so real, we got real lucky in having her. Yeah. And then okay. over, over here. here. Um, that was probably one of my, I think that's the first piece I did after I got, Janet said, go away, go to my, <laughs> find, find models. That was my first model. Um, I was, was a model from class. Uh -huh. um, and uh, that one came out, that one came out nice. I didn't do the elephant, that's You did not gift, do the elephant, but I, I was going to, I was wondering. <laughs> but this is also, um, also a friend. Yeah. So here you, and some people have photographs of friends. Yes, I have their sculptures <laughs> of friends. I think I, I love that. 